Okay, welcome everybody. Let's get started. Come on, there we go. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, recording this for students. So just a little background on it. Uh, this was a conference presentation I gave in uh, 2006. Uh, and uh, I, the slides you're going to see are from the conference. And the, the talk is going to be pretty much from the conference also. I've added a couple things and changed a couple things uh, uh, to you know, meet the needs of students a little bit better. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit longer than the typical conference presentation uh, because of that. But uh, you know, this is pretty much what conference presentations look like. So uh, charitable giving following the 2004 tsunami, social impact theory, and was America stingy? And so, uh, what happened was back in 2004, the day after Christmas, uh, early in the morning, there was a nine magnitude earthquake off the Sri, Sri Lankan coast. Uh, that caused a tsunami that hit the shores of eight countries. Uh, a quarter million people were killed and an equal number of injured. Five million more were in some need of emergency relief. And this created an unprecedented need for charity. Uh, and uh, governments donated $6 billion, relief agencies, and international financial institutions donated uh, $22.3 billion. And private and corporate donations accounted for uh, over $5 billion. However, in the days right after the uh, tsunami, uh, there was a little bit of uh, controversy in the newspapers regarding uh, the United States. Uh, and uh, Jan uh, Eagleton, uh, the UN Undersecretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, uh, said, uh, you know, around January 27th, a day after it, uh, the foreign assistance of many countries is now 0.1 or 0.2 percent of their gross national income. I think that uh, it is sti uh, stingy, really. I don't think that uh, it is very generous. And this is what he was saying about the Americans, uh, the American government donation. And uh, you know, so uh, this was in response to the three uh, three hundred and fifty million dollar uh, government donation. And after you know, or excuse me, this was before the donation. Uh, originally, the United States had pledged $35 million after the controversy. They upped it to $3, uh, $350 million. However, this created a lasting stigma of uh, stinginess, uh, where uh, different, organiza different news organizations, such as the Financial Times of London and the New York Times, uh, have you know, remembered that Americans may not have been as generous as other countries. And looking at this situation, I want to objectively examine U.S. giving and answer the question, was the U.S. stingy? And I want to examine the application of a social psychological principle to the relationship between giving and other variables. And so the question is, what other variables? Uh, Latin A uh, talked about his social impact theory. Uh, that is, in uh, Bassett and Lassenet's study uh, in 1981, uh, he talked about uh, how the status, distance, and number of people involved in the news story about a catastrophe uh, affected uh, how much allocation, uh, you know, uh, how much coverage people allocated uh, to uh, the event in a newspaper. And this was predicted by his social impact theory, uh, where Latin A says that social impact is a function of the strength or the status of the stimulus, the immediacy of the stimulus, and the number of stimuli sources. And so to talk about social impact theory in terms of uh, this situation, strength or status will remain unoperationalized. However, we can operationalize the other two variables, immediacy uh, and number of sources. So 
immediacy can be operationally defined as the distance from band to ash, uh, which was where the tsunami damage was centered. Uh, and the number of sources uh, can be operationalized as the number of dead country persons in the tsunami. And so uh, what we're going to do is operationalize two parts of the social impact theory. Immediacy, that is how close a country was to uh, the tsunami, and also the number of sources. How many people from their country were vacationing or living over there and were killed? And then uh, the outcome variable will be donations. And this will be based on what Reuters reported as of January 6, 2005. And uh, the other uh, variables were operationalized dead. Uh, these were the Associated Press estimates of January 1st. And the distance uh, is miles from Banda Ash to the capital city of the country in question, uh, which, of course, is a very rough estimate but it does uh, you know, work generally well. And then also, we needed a control variable. Uh, Eglin talked about gross national product, and that's right, there needs to be some way of uh, you know, controlling for the different amounts of money that countries have and people have. And so one way to do that is look at the gross domestic product. This is the value of final goods and services produced within a country's borders in a year. And it's going to be an indicator of standard of living. And it's disposable. So therefore, it's something that you can give as a charitable donation. And I got the, that data from the CIA World Factbook. And so here's the analysis plan that I intended, uh, intended to do. First off, I'm going to do a multiple regression on all of the countries uh, and test the elements of the social impact theory. And this will be through an analysis of the regression. Uh, and then we'll move on uh, to actually seeing if the United States is stingy or not. The way that we're going to do this is I'm going to remove the United States from the data set. And then I am going to uh, you know, run the analysis over again. And I'm going to see where, uh, what the regression line uh, places the United States. And I'm going to see whether or not this is predicted based on social impact theory elements. And then I'm going to also do it again for significant uh, predictors. So first off, let's look at the descriptive statistics. Gross domestic product, uh, distance, private giving, government giving, and uh, dead. Uh, so uh, you know, gross domestic product is in trillion dollars. Uh, you know, distance is in miles, uh, private giving and government giving is in millions of dollars, and dead is uh, in uh, the units, uh, you know, listed. So uh, we have uh, data from 27 countries, uh, however, only data from 11 countries in terms of private giving. Okay, so first off, let's look at the zero order correlations. And uh, we see that private giving and gross domestic product and government giving and gross domestic product uh, are positively correlated. Uh, in terms of the dead in giving, we see a positive correlation, uh, you know, which uh, is in the correct direction. However, distance is in the wrong direction. That is, the closer you are, you should give more. That's a negative correlation. And we see that both of these zero order correlations are positive. And I'll address that in a couple of minutes when we get to the multiple regression. So, oh, I don't know why I put this slide in here, but might as well uh, talk about it now. So my original plan was to treat uh, the number dead and distance uh, as variables and then conceptualize gross domestic product as a moderator variable or a control variable. And so that's what I started out doing. And so here's the first uh, multiple regression. Uh, and let me get a pointer. Pointer. 
laser pointer. And this is on government giving. And what I did was I entered gross domestic product first because it was a control variable. And then I entered uh, the dead and dis uh, distance second together. So I had two models. The first model uh, looked at the effect of uh, gross domestic product on government giving. The second model uh, looked at gross domestic product and the number dead and distance uh, on uh, you know, uh, government giving. And so one thing of note here is that the, when we look at this uh, multiple regression, uh, the signs for uh, distance reverse. That is, they were both positive in the zero or correlation. Now they're negative. And so what this indicates is that gross domestic product and the number dead are acting as suppressor variables. That is, they're suppressing uh, the relationship between distance and the amount of giving. Uh, and so uh, that was one of the first things that I discovered in the regression analysis. We also have the results down here of the uh, comparison of the two models. Uh, the first model had a multiple R squared of 0.34, and that was significantly different than zero. Uh, the second model, looking at G, uh, gross domestic product and debt, that had a, uh, R uh, a multiple R squared change of 0.213, and that change was significant. So putting in the number dead did significantly increase uh, the model's ability to predict government giving. Uh, so we see that the number dead does predict government giving. And then I looked at private giving and did the same thing essentially. The first model was gross domestic product. Then I added a gross domestic product and distance and the number dead. And again, we see that uh, distance still stays, uh, you know, uh, you know, is uh, still stays positive, so there's no suppressor going on here. And in fact, the only variable that's significant is gross domestic product. So the number dead and the distance for private giving does not really influence private giving. And we can see that here, gross domestic product is a significant uh, increase uh, you know, from zero. But then when we add in the other variables, uh, distance and the number dead, we see that the increase in R squared, multiple R squared, is zero. And that's not significant at all. So, generally what I found was, instead of this model, we have this model, where there seems to be a significant relationship between distance and giving, and it's being uh, moderated by the number of dead and the gross domestic product. So these two are moderator variables, and the main relationship seems to be between distance and the uh, dependent variable of giving. So uh, a summary of what we just went over. Debt is significant related, significantly related to government giving. When dead and gross domestic uh, product are uh, entered, distance changes its direction, the weak. And this is moderate support for the social impact theory. That is, dead should be uh, significantly correlated, uh, and distance should be correlated negatively, and it is. So it provides support for the social impact theory. When we talk about private giving, we see that only gross domestic product is significantly related to private giving. And this offers us no support for social impact theory. It's saying that people, uh, people privately are giving based on how much money their country has in general and how many people are affected by it, how distant it is, has no effect. So it has no support for the social impact theory. So the next set of analyses is going to ans answer the question, was the United States seri uh, series, was the United States stingy? And so the way we're going to do this is I'm going to first remove the U.S. data. So I'm going to take the U.S. data out of the data set. 
So now we have 26 countries. And now I'm going to calculate another regression analysis on all of the countries except the United States. And the reason why is now I will have a regression line which allows us to predict giving based on the number dead, G, gross domestic product, and distance. And so then I will plug in America's actual numbers and then we'll get a y hat, a predicted value uh, for American giving, and we'll compare that to the actual U.S. data. And this will tell us whether or not America was giving based on what would be predicted by what other countries were giving. And so here we go again, uh, looking at government giving. And uh, what we do is we have two models. We first test gross domestic, we first enter gross domestic product, and then we enter distance and dead, second. And uh, the first model uh, is uh, you know, not significantly different from zero. And then we enter uh, you know, gross domestic product and the number of dead, uh, and we see that the number of dead significantly uh, is significantly related or predicts uh, you know government giving uh, distance you have that flip uh, so uh, oh, you don't have the flip I'm sorry here so what that means is uh, with American ta America taken out of the equation there is no suppressor so it looks like America was being the suppressor uh, but we do have the relationship between the number of dead and government giving. And that increase in the model's predictive value is significant at the 0.05 level. So now what we need to do is calculate regression equations. And so pulling things from here, uh, you know, we have this equation, y hat, that is predicted government giving, uh, should be equal to the gross domestic product of the country, uh, you know, times uh, 3.025e to the minus 11th. Uh, that's a scientific notation, so that's a pretty small number. Uh, plus distance uh, times uh, 6.83e uh, to uh, the negative uh, 03, and add to that the number of dead plus six times 6.12, and then we have the y-intercept here, which is 44. So the number of U.S. dead in the tsunami was 36. The distance from Banda Ash to uh, Washington, D.C. is 9,000 miles. Uh, the U.S.'s gross domestic product was $1.1 uh, you know, trillion, dollars or, or $100 trillion, I think. So we plug those numbers in. Uh, you know, there's the y-intercept, so we have 1.1 uh, to the 13th power times the weight for GDP plus uh, 9,340 miles times 6.83 uh, to the negative uh, third power uh, uh, times 10 to the negative third power plus 36 people dead times 6.121. Multiply that out, that gives us a US Y hat of $661 million. That's what America should have donated based on this regression line. However, uh, regression lines sometimes are not per perfect predictors of things. And so what we have to do is look at the standard error of the Y hat uh, or the standard error of the residuals. And that value is uh, 115.4596 uh, with an N of 26. We can calculate a 95% confidence interval around $661 million. Uh, that 95% confidence interval would then go from uh, $222 million to $900 million. The actual U.S. government giving was $350 million. Uh, so therefore, the United States was pretty much right in the middle of the predicted confidence interval. Uh, and so uh, that uh, you know, means that what America gave was predicted or was expected 
uh, at the 95% confidence interval of you know what other countries gave. And here is a visual way to think about it. Uh, here is the confidence interval going from 222 to 900 million dollars. And here is what America actually gave. And here is what the, uh, you know, the line predicts, the regression equation predicts. So we are less giving less than the regression equation predicts, but we're well within the 95% confidence interval. And then, uh, let's see, what is this analysis? Uh, we're going to look at, uh, oh, let me look ahead. Okay, yep. And believe this analysis is we're looking at private giving. Yes, it's been 14 years, so I kind of don't remember everything. Uh, private giving, so we're going to do the same thing again for private giving. Uh, the only thing significant was gross domestic product. Uh, that is, adding in distance and the dead didn't really help anything with private giving. Uh, but I did calculate a regression line for that. Y hat equals, and here is the uh, Y intercept. Uh, here is the weight for GDP. Here is the weight for distance, and here is the weight for dead. Uh, and plugging in the US values, which I talked about before, we have uh, $680 million. Uh, and the uh, standard error of y hat, uh, that is the standard error of the prediction, is 68, uh, you know, 0.17, uh, and that's based on an n of 10. And so calculating the confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval uh, is plus or minus 154. So that gives us a range of uh, 5, uh, uh, 126 million to 834 million. Private giving was a hundred million dollars or a billion dollars. So private US citizens gave more than what would have been predicted. Now uh, for the purists uh, that are you know focused on the purity of using uh, MRC techniques uh, for uh, you know this analysis, they would say, well, you have this theory, but the theory is not really that well supported, and you actually have some empirical data. Why don't you use that empirical data? And what they're saying is, what I should do is basically remove the United States as I did before, but this time I should only use significant predictors from the analysis. And so going back over that analysis, there was only two significant predictors. Uh, for government giving, uh, the significant predictor was the number of dead. And for private giving, the significant predictor was a gross domestic product. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go back and I'm going to do those uh, two regression analyses. So this is the number dead on government giving. Uh, and of course, it's much more simpler now because we have the constant, that is the y-intercept, and the uh, slope. And so uh, taking that and plugging in, there's the constant again, there's uh, the uh, slope for the number of dead. We plug in the United States, and y-hat for the United States comes out to $266 million. The standard error of prediction is 105, and the 95% confidence interval goes from 47 to 485 million dollars. Actual government giving, 350 million. So based on this very stringent uh, you know, use of multiple regression, it shows that the US government giving is within the confidence interval. And again, here's another uh, you know, uh, visual representation of that, showing that yes, indeed, America's prediction uh, actual value was within the confidence interval uh, and is actually a little bit higher than what uh, the US government uh, was predicted to give. Then uh, finally we'll look at uh, the gross domestic product on private giving because that's the only thing that was significant. So we have a very simple regression line of the y-intercept and the slope. And so 
we plug everything in and that gives us a Y hat for the US of $985 million and the standard error of the estimate uh, is 67 and so that gives us a 95% uh, confidence interval between 830 million and 1.1 trillion dollars of uh, 1.1 billion dollars excuse me uh, and the actual giving was 1 billion dollars so uh, US citizens gave what was predicted. So to summarize uh, these uh, predictions uh, regarding uh, the uh, social impact theory, uh, you know, private uh, U.S. sources gave more than predicted. Government uh, agents, you know, the government gave as predicted. And uh, when we're just looking at the significant predictors, uh, both the private and government giving of the U.S. was as predicted. So the conclusions are the U.S. was not stingy. Uh, and in no way can we say that the U.S. was stingy based on either the using the uh, you, know, uh, you know, social impact theory predictors or the significant predictors. Uh, so the U.S. was definitely not stingy. Uh, for govern, give, government giving, social impact theory worked well. Uh, private citizens responded to media images and gave till it hurt. That is, the, they gave until they ran out of money or ran out of comfortable money to give away. And that's the gross domestic product. And that's not affected by social impact theory uh, variables. Politicians, however, have learned to think in terms of local neighbors, that is, distance, and constituents, dead and relatives of the dead. Thus, politicians were affected by these variables. And that's why uh, you know, uh, the social impact theory worked well for government giving, but probably not for private giving. Or at least that's my guess or my uh, limitations that future researchers could uh, examine in the future. And. Uh, that is it for the slideshow. I thought I had an extra slide, but that was it from 14 years ago. Uh, I don't know if the slide's still up there. I may want to go check. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.